I'm going to use a solar panel project as a case study. Uh, as we learn the concepts in this class for planning and scheduling a class, I'll give examples, I'll demonstrate using this solar panel project. You'll then be able to review this information and then prepare the various planning and scheduling documents for your team projects. Let's first start off with the background. This is actually my house. I live in the Rancho Bernardo area. And our utility usage was averaging about 1,200 kilowatts per month. And that's a big electricity bill. My wife and I are both from the south. I must admit we tend to like our air conditioning on. The objectives for this project is I wanted to offset 100% of the electricity usage. I wanted my bill to be zero. Also, it was important that I hire a company that would do the work safely. I would never want to be in a situation where someone was injured at my house installing the solar panels. And then finally, I wanted to hire a company that had the highest workmanship from a quality standpoint, and there would be no rework. The inspections with the city and with San San Diego Gas and Electric would go smoothly and the solar panel project would be approved. Some of the key deliverables for the pre-construction phase are site survey and assessment. We first had to evaluate the roof, determine how many panels, assess the monthly utility usage, and that would be input into the design package. The design package included drawings, a plan view, electrical drawings, structural type drawings, the actual solar panels. It included the product data sheets, which panels we were going to use, and also which micro inverter. We also had to prepare via the web the net metering agreement. This was the agreement with San Diego Gas and Electric where we could return generated electricity, generated power back into the grid. We also had to prepare a permit application with the City of San Diego. Within that application was an application form and then also the design package. I live in an area that has a HOA, so we had to prepare a form, get four neighbors to review and approve, and then get approval from the HOA. And finally, we had to have a contract with Stellar Solar. This is the company that I went with to install the solar panels. Construction deliverables included the racking equipment. This is the equipment that you're going to install on the roof and then install the solar panels. The microinverters are what's converting the sunshine into AC electricity. The electrical system would include the conduit, the wires, the control panel, etc. There was also a monitoring system. We used in-phase microinverters and they had their own monitoring system that was connected to those inverters and then we would be able to review it via a website. There was solar panel system testing. I could have included this as a testing phase, decided to just incorporate or include this particular deliverable in the construction phase. And there was a City of San Diego inspection. You can't start the system until they approve. And then finally, SDG&E also had an inspection. Before we could start operating the system, they had to inspect and approve the system. Post-construction deliverables included the web monitoring. We have a very cool website that I can access via my phone or a tablet. There was also a construction certification type report that also included the as-built drawings. That report incorporated photographs. It also included the actual approved permits, etc. So it was a complete package with all of the documentation associated with the construction. Let's look at some photographs. This is the solar panels looking west. There's a total of 30 solar panels. You can see that they're installed on the top of the south facing roof. You can easily see that there's a chimney, so we couldn't get a solar panel on top of a chimney. There's also some vents in the house that we were not able to install the solar panels. So that's one of a critical part of the design phase is to calculate the number of panels and then confirm that your roof in fact has the area where you can then install all of the solar panels. 
These photographs show the rack system. This is the system that we're going to install the solar panels on. You can see there's a tile hook. That's a prefabricated piece of steel that's installed. It's drilled into the roof. There's some sealant material that they use to make sure that water doesn't enter through those bolts. Uh, from the tile hook, you can see they also attach a smaller L type of clip onto that tile hook. That's where we're going to then install the C channels. If you look to the right of the photograph, you can see the C channels that are installed along the top of the roof. This is where the solar panels are going to get bolted onto the C channels. And then you can also see the detail how they connect the C channel to the tile hook. Pretty cool. This is a stellar solar panel company system that they incorporated. I was very impressed with it, making certain that it would secure the panels and also making certain there would be no leaks in the future if we someday did in fact have an El Nino storm event. This is a close-up view of the solar panels. You can also clearly see an area of the roof that has a roof vent. We're not able to install a solar panel on that vent. You can also see the C-channels and you can also very clearly see some of the tile hooks that were used to connect to the C-channels. Uh, excellent view and showing some of the details with respect to the roof connection. This close-up view shows the solar panel, the tile hook, the L connection point and also the connection to the C-channel. A very good close-up detail of the solar panel. It's approximately about five inches above the tile. You do want to make certain that you have adequate clearance or there could be overheating of the solar panels. Also, you don't necessarily want it to be sticking up a foot off of the roof. I remember driving through a neighborhood one day and saw this and it's just from a cosmetic standpoint it doesn't look very appealing. So minimum uh, or should I say a maximum of six inches and maybe a minimum of three inches are the requirements for getting the solar panels above the tile. This photograph shows some of the electrical equipment. This photograph you can see some of the vents penetrating through the roof. You can also see the conduit then taking that L down through the top of the roof. There's also some additional electric, electrical conduit hardware just adjacent to the solar panel. So again, the electrical system includes the conduit, the wires. It also includes the control box. There's a number of various components that are part of the electrical system. Some additional photographs showing the electrical equipment. The left photograph, you can see some of the conduit. They did paint the conduit. There's some additional boxes that were installed that house various electrical equipment. Uh, there's also the fuse box on the right. They had to install some additional fuses. There's a total of five fuses you can see that they installed. You had to verify that we had the number of fuses available to install the new fuses. If in fact that we didn't have adequate room, then a new fuse box would have had to have been installed. So again, this is an overview of some of the electrical equipment that was installed for this solar panel project. This is my favorite photograph. This was during startup. You can see just above the red line, there's a, a bar with an arrow pointing to the left. This means that we're returning electricity to the grid. Normally that arrow is pointed to the right, which means that you're getting electricity from the utility company. But this was exciting. It was December 14th, I believe, and this was just a quick system startup to make certain that the system was operational prior to the City of San Diego and SDG&E inspections. This is a screenshot from my iPad showing the solar panel system along the roof. Again, there are a total of 30 panels. You can see on Thursday, November 19th, 2015, total of 35.4 kilowatt hours were produced. Uh, the peak power was 5.48 kilowatts. I believe that occurred just right before noon. It was a beautiful day. It was 67 degrees, sunny, more on the cool side. I really like the the graph. You can see the energy is being generated when the sun is rising. You can see it peaks during the middle of the day and then starts to taper off to the sun setting and then no longer energy being produced. 